Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. After a short break, we are now back again with the Seed Story Cup number three. And upcoming for you is the match between Alish and Forzen here. And it's the elimination match, so whoever loses that is already out of the tournament and did not advance through the group stage. And again, for that match, Nimsh is here. I'm, I'm happy to be here again, and uh, oh man, what a match. Like, uh, first, we have two great for, uh, players. We have Forsen versus Alash. So, uh, most of the people know Forsen. Like, Forsen was popular from the very start, uh, with the very beginning of Hearthstone, uh, playing a lot of Rogue, being a popular streamer and a great competitive player. Uh, recently, um, I, well, he has his ups and downs. Like, he did well in qual qualifiers, qualified twice for the pinnacle, and uh, he, did some, he had some good scores. Um, but some, sometimes he gets eliminated early as well. Like, you know, it's Harston. But Alash yeah. is like a, a player from Czech Republic, and um, he was qualifying a lot for, for different tournaments, and he had good scores as well. One of the best players from, uh, from Czech Republic, and uh, he was here like many times before as well. So, a, a, a staple guest in, in Take TV. But I think the players are ready so we can jump into the game. Uh, to see what's happening. For and now Alish starts with his Shaman, so Shaman very popular today, at least in this group. Uh, it's quite interesting to see that, because Shaman recently was falling out of favor a bit, but it seems to be back on top. Well, I can relate with a small situation I had with Savitz. They were discussing decks with Savitz before the tournament, and uh, I had my classes selected, and I didn't know what to pick for the fifth class, and then we I'm like, wait, Savit, there are some other classes in Hearthstone than the ones I have picked up. And then we opened the class screen, and I was like, wow, there are nine classes. Like, what is this? <laughs> the men class? Sh sh shaman? <laughs> What's that? Yeah, Shaman and Priest were Oh, quite Priest? What's that? Yeah, Priest. Nobody plays Priest. And also Voria. Uh, well, it had a comeback because Thorison is quite good in it. But we see it really a lot today. And now Alish starts out with maybe because he remembered the game. Xixo started the Shaman versus him. So now he thinks, well, when Xixo did that, he already advanced. Maybe I can do it as well. And going up against Forzen here, he went for it. He takes out that Haunted Creeper and takes even out one Spectral Spider with the Cruel Taskmaster. Well, the thing is that Alash is playing a very different build than Sixo. He is playing more of a traditional Shaman with um, with Feral Spirit, with Haunted Creeper, some weapons. But I believe like we'll see Lightning Storms, we see Harrison and uh, Fire Elemental already. And that kind of build was originally very good versus Warrior, because you do have a lot of minions, you do chip in the armor. If you play a Doomhammer, that's really good. And uh, Warrior struggles because it's losing armor. Uh, maybe a good Brawl can win versus that, but Shaman can snowball, and it is a tough matchup. And we already see that Harrison Jones lining up in Alish's hand here, so that uh, will also have an impact on the game. I'm pretty sure about that. Maybe even Forzen will deliver him a full death spite. Maybe uh, Alish is lucky here, but anyway, he will he will get some value out of that. For now, he will go for Haunted Creeper Dread, that 2-2 two -two Cruel Taskmaster away, I expect, and then go to the face. So he established uh, quite a board here for himself. And uh, Forzen, on the other hand, can now follow that up with a Sludge Belcher. So the question is... Well, it seems like both players they actually have good hands. Uh, Alish has an amazing curve with... Uh, well, now the pi that pilot shooter was, was very important because he can play it instead of just a coining Fire Elemental. Or he can even... He can just play it now and maybe Great. next turn coin Dr. Boom, which will be uh, a huge play. So he has a couple of options. That definitely did not play Harrison Jones. And for, for Forsen, uh, he does have a great curve as well. Like he can play another Sludge Belcher next turn. He can play Sylvanas if he if he wants to. And there is Doctor Boom. Uh, <laughs> Doctor <both> Balance. <laughs> Doctor Balance. There's a GG for both players. So, <laughs> what would you do being Alash here? Like you can coin Fire Elemental, but then on turn six you will have uh, just Piloted Shredder and a Totem, and then Boom on seven. If you play Piloted Shredder. That's the thing. Do you go for the hex here just for having the good curve? And Alish decides it's way uh, well. It's worth going for that hex, and so he just uses it on a sludge belcher. But uh, maybe by getting that advantage with the curve, that equals it out. Well, uh, from our perspective, that hex 
uh, maybe was a bit wasted because we see a lot of bombs, but from Alex's perspective, he did set up the board for a clear Dr. Boom next turn. But against the Warrior, you always have to to expect Sylvanas, Dr. Boom, maybe a Baron Gaddon, Gromish for sure. If it's played early, you have to maybe uh, think about a Ragnaros or Isera. So the Hex is very important in that matchup. And if you have a way to deal with a Sludge Belcher, uh, you should really think about keeping it. Anyway, he went for it and has now a nice turn here with a Zombie Chow. And first of all, the Harrison Jones drawing him another piloted shredder and can establish a board for himself next turn, maybe with the Dr. Boom. I like the strategy that Alesh took here. Uh, he's basically trying to uh, keep the board healthy, keep the board big, and um, and then follow up with the good curve. And you know, Forsen doesn't have that many cards. Whenever Warrior has like four cards, I don't consider it a lot. As, as, and opposed to like eight or nine. No yeah. Is Sarah, by the way? I like a recent addition to Warrior decks uh, in form of the Sarah. Like a lot of people drop like Straza. Oh, Neptulon. Wow. Now both players, they have all the bombs. The, but uh, for Alash, he can even play. Hmm. He has to deal with that Sylvanas. I like just trading here. Yeah, definitely trade into that and then go for either Dr. Boom or Neptulon. I would go for Dr. Boom this turn. Yeah, Dr. Boom. Basically, whenever you have a green Dr. Boom, you can play. But the alternative was a double pilot at Shredder. I wouldn't hate that. that that's a po powerful play as well. Boom into Boom. So what is going, oh, to, sorry. Ha what is going to happen here? The very complicated board. What yeah, that's going to be interesting. It all comes down to the bombs. What do they hit? Also, important thing that uh, Forsen didn't steal the Zombie Chow. Alex would love to see that Zombie Chow given away. He has a heal for five. We are trying to have an, an aggressive strategy. Well, right now, if he just... Um, that's the thing. Do you attack for face? Like, you are the one being aggressive. You are the one pushing here. So the bombs are going to trade. Four for face. That's wow, loud. you hit for four to the face. So now you really have to think about putting on more aggression. Maybe with Lurathub and coin into piloted Shredder. Then going face with that Dr. Boom. That's a lot of pressure here. And Lurathub is even preventing a potential brawl coming in. So I would suggest, Alish, go face here, go full face mode. Yeah, the only problem that he's facing, it, 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 he doesn't really have a follow-up. Like, he has those minions, but he doesn't have any spells. The Fire Metal is going to deal three points of damage, but this is enough. That's the question, just with a Sludge Belcher coming in. Well, the heal from the Zombie Chow is something we also have to consider. Armor Smith, Cruel Taskmaster are being played, and he will heal up back to 13 HP. Yeah, so Farsen is stabilizing. Like, this is what Warrior needs. You don't need to really uh, win the mid game. Uh, like, in, at the end game, if you stabilize and said, oh, Alakir is a powerful draw, but is it, is it changing anything, anything in here? It doesn't really look like. Uh, the fire elemental seems like a good choice here to take care of that Dr. Boom. Yeah, I, like, I think like that's the best play, and also you can throw them up. So you see what you, what totem you get first. Spell damage doesn't mean much. Uh, maybe... Yeah, usually not too... Taunt totem would be great. Not too good without spells in your hand. So there is an execute for a 7-4. There is Sarah. I think you'd kill this... Um, maybe attack with Rommersmith first. Yeah, maybe you, you're lucky. Maybe well, everybody says it. The Doomsayer. How are you going to see it? There is an Atpagal. It's still good for uh, Forsen. And now just executing the Dr. Boom, uh, I think he is starting to be in a... All right, I'm, I'm not going to call it a good position. Like, he only has a Sarah and double armor smith. Nightmare is not what he needed. Forzen's behind, and Alish actually got out, out really well. Um, Airshock is a great card for Alish. Another card that's that's going to shut down the Sarah and leave Forzen only with armor smiths. And to me also, the Sludge Belcher is really uh, preventing, uh, uh, is preventing Forzen for uh, having a good trades on the board. Uh, the Sludge Belter is really shutting down whatever comes here by Forzen. I think that for Alish right now, you just play Sludge Belcher, Pirate of the Shredder and Airshock. And the thing behind it is that even if there is a Isera Awakening, you attack for 6 to face, you put Forzen on 12, Isera Awakening will put him on 7, and you will have something from Pirate of the Shredder. So whatever happens, you are in good shape. Wait, was that like the card from Nat Pagel? Or did I miss it? Not, not Pagel draw Net Sludge Pagel Belcher? did draw the Sludge Belcher. Oh, and that's then the huge, actually. Like, yeah, two cards here in this situation. So that Pagel actually worked. 
We are seeing a lot of great, great legendaries this, ter uh, this tournament. Yeah, and the players are taking notes right now, so Alish is really uh, planning that, that through. And now, while he is roping, he decided to swing to the face, goes for exact the play that you just announced. And now it's Forzen's turn to to bring something to the table. A brawl would be pretty nice here, I would say. I think Brawl is the card, like, Wrath doesn't cut it. Brawl would be the card that's needed. He needed a Sarah Awakening last turn, and then he would be able to heal himself a bit, like, get a, a lot of armor. With, but Brawl, yeah. But without Brawl, I think it's over. Uh, can he actually deal with this board here? With Nightmare, he can kill the Sash Belcher. Um, with Whirlwind, he can get some armor back. So he gives himself a chance to draw into Brawl next turn, but he's nowhere near, near killing Alash, and Alash has two Shaman Legendaries in his hand, so Alash has all the tools to steal And he game. has the Net Paggle that can always draw him a Rockbiter weapon, and once he draws that, Alakir is gonna turn crazy, even though Forzen managed to heal up to now 25 HP again. That air shock was so crucial. Like shutting down Isera, shutting down the card draw for Forsen. Just getting dragons every turn and, and interesting car dream cards could put Forsen back in the saddle in this game. But right now he is in a dire situation. Even though he has a lot of armor, he has those armor smiths. Neptulon just filling the hand of Alash with fish. And let's see what Murlocs do we get. Wow. Oh, he actually gets two Murlocs to can play this turn even. Yeah, the Murloc tight, uh, tight caller and the puddle stomper is pretty nice here. But the uh, two, uh, the two, <laughs> what's it even called? The Siltfin Spirit Walker. Siltfin Sp Spirit Walker. They're not great, but they're not bad. They can draw cards as well. Forsen needs a brawl. That's the card. He needs a brawl, and uh, if he gets a brawl, he might have a chance. But without the brawl. He's not dead yet. Yeah, it's just a death spide, but... Or is he? That's uh, 6, 7... Well, there's like 5 from Murlocs, plus 13. That's 18 points of damage. With Alakir, that's uh, another 6, 24. So... I'm counting like Pilot Shredder being killed by Isera already. First is a 28. If he kills, Pilot Shredder gets a 4. Uh, Milhouse Mana Storm is lethal. Stan. But wouldn't you take out the uh, Fire Elemental here? Um, you mi actually might. Even wow, though. wow. He even uses the Nightmare to take out Neptulon. That might be better. And With Rogue Biter, is, wow. is, is a lethal. It's like 10 uh, plus. But you can't play it this turn. You're just on 7 mana. You're locked down here. Oh, yeah, alright. So. Um, well, you just play the Defender of Argus then, tot them up and... and or go. do you go for the crazy card draw? <laughs> do you trade your Murlocs into that to just draw some more cards? It's just cards? going to die, it's just going to die next turn, there's no need. Like, the only card you might be afraid of is Brawl, but you know that you have a full up anyway. Yeah, I would have loved to see some BM here and then the Great Alec here with two Rockbiter weapons. But anyway, Alish decides to swing to the face like that, and uh, now it's the last time here for Forzen. Please draw the, pra uh, draw the Brawl or go home. That's a shield maiden, that's not it. But I want to talk about matchups as well. Uh, because Forsen is playing this warrior, he has a druid and he has a mage. His hunter got banned uh, or vetoed. Alish has druid, shaman, and hunter. His mage got vetoed. So Alish won with a shaman. That's a very important win. Shaman versus druid is not that good. Shaman versus mage is not that good. So um, Alish queued the best matchup possible. And he, he took it. That was the best matchup for Alish. And he's winning versus Forsen 1 to 0. Now, uh, Shaman is out. But uh, in my opinion, the matchup between Druid and Shaman is in the Shaman's favor. Is in Shaman's favor? In my opinion, yes. Depends on the Shaman build, right? Yeah, it depends on the Shaman build. But uh, I guess if you're having the Mech Shaman, you're too aggressive for the Druid to yeah. deal with that because Druids have problems to deal with. What about this decks. build? With like and this mid range build, it depends on your hexes, I would say. If you draw those hexes early, and if you keep them, if you manage to hold them, I guess you're also favored. I forgot to leave again. So we will have to rejoin quickly. But anyway, let's see what comes up here. And Forzen sticks to the warrior, and Alash brings his hunter, and we see it's already a face hunter. I will just quickly rejoin. Not actually in. Yeah, I, I was in, but 
you have the spectator bug where you can't see the opponent's hand then oh, okay. when you stay in the queue. I've seen Lepernemsh, so I like this <laughs> hand already. <laughs> Lepernemsh. Yeah, but uh, I would definitely give the edge here to the warrior because uh, okay. usually with double shield maiden with the sludge belchers, warriors are able to survive all the aggression of a face hunter pretty easily. Oh yeah, I agree. Like originally, uh, warrior is very good versus this matchup, especially if you get the whirlwinds. You need the early removal. But then I've seen uh, on ladder, I've seen hunter win the matchup many times. And uh, some the, the the thing is like. Well, Forsen's hand is exactly what you need to win this matchup. Fiery Wind X, Whirlwind, and the Armor Smith, that's even, everything you need. Even a Shield Slam to kill a, a nimble companion on whatever is game playing. Double. And if Alish now goes for the double Leper Nymch, uh, he is going to be in a big trouble because that Whirlwind is going to be crucial. Oh man, Forsen just quickly... S oh, oh my god! Luckily he can't play that. Yeah, he can't play that, but it's still like this turn. It's just, just ugly. But look at that. Whirlwind for three minions. Is there any reason not to do it? I think not really. Like No, not really. That's that's a play that even you could do drunk. You, you could play drunk and you could still do that play. Uh, I want to make an announcement that no Leopard Ninjas were harmed during filming of this event. <laughs> uh, I think that's not correct. <laughs> they died in a brutal way. You probably just go with the bow. Yeah. Uh, kill the armor smith and then hope there you is. You have to, else. but look at the hand now. Alish just has a infiltrator, wolf rider, and the only pressure is already over. He's almost done, and like now I, I can see Alish being really upset about the second armor smith. Like, you, you can't even win versus Well, Alco. random huffer coming in, ladies huffer and gentlemen. Would be great. Uh, Misha is not that bad. Like, Leo yeah. would be worse, but. Misha is okay, but is there a way to. To have enough, if he did draw a shield slam, uh, a shield block now, he would have had a nice shield slam, but like that, you have to think about trading your armor smith into that, or maybe the weapon? I think I like, hmm, if you, if you trade armor smith and shield slam, what does it do? Like, next turn you have five mana, doesn't do much. Do you want to establish a weapon? And you I hope for a top deck? I would like to keep something on the board, and you're still so healthy here that I would go for the weapon, and then the shield slam, and then attack into the Misha and still have have your armor smith because also if you do not have a nice way to to trade with that wolf rider and that walking infiltrator, you're gonna take a lot of damage from them. But as it looks, Forzen goes for the shield slam here and it does not really care about his armor smith, so the lady is going to die against the Grizzly. I didn't do the math like what's better. Oh, there is a second animal companion. That's not bad. Like also having a five mana. So now even if he gets the arc. Unbelievable. Two animal companions and no huffer. Well, I haven't seen that in I'm a while. I'm sure Alish is upset about it. A huffer will be better here. Acolyte of Pain is nice because it fills the curve and he will be able to, to use the fireworks with that. Deal with the Worgen Infiltrator. What do you think about Worgen Infiltrator? It like somehow got back to Face Hunter. Yeah, but it's a couple of months ago that it became popular again and with the Glaive Zuka it really has some value. Look at that! An Iron Beak Owl top deck. It would have been so great if Forzen on the other hand had the Sludge Belcher top deck on turn 5, but without the Sludge Belcher, well, you can still silence the Sylvanas if you want to. And somehow Alish is putting on the pressure here. He somehow managed to bring Forzen down to 13 HP, even though it looked so good from the beginning on. Yeah. Person has no taunts, like he doesn't really have a good. Oh, would weapon. you really go for Thorison here over Sylvanas? Yeah, because Sylvanas is not going to die to this. Like you play Sylvanas and he attacks your face. Yeah, that's that's true. And you can't kill your own Sylvanas. And that's with Thorison you at least have like Alex Straza one turn earlier. How much damage? Uh, this is uh, over. This what? Is no, this is not over yet, but like that was super close. I was that's like, oh my really god. That's really close. He has to draw a shield maiden. She's made or maybe antique here, but if he plays that, that would be very crazy. Ramash is not it, and the face hunter is going to take it. It's <sighs> such a fast game from so, Alish. How can we explain that? We had a great start here for for Forzen. He had everything he needed. What what was wrong? How could he not win that game? So um, I think the coin made a difference. Uh, the fact that. Well, th did he have a coin? He didn't have a coin. No, he did have a coin. He coined yeah, Armorsmith. He, he had the coin. He, he had, had it all. Coin. 
he had everything. Yeah. <laughs> But well, not the victory. It only shows the power of the face hunter. Uh, right now, the current build um, that's, uh, that's really plowing through everything. The deck is so consistent. Every draw that Alex had just supported the strategy, which is just go deal damage, go for face. Alex also made good decisions with trading. Uh, he didn't use the owl to, to, to deal with acolyte. He just killed the acolyte. And um, like even though like double leper gnome at the beginning having those free one drops even though they got cleared by whirlwind they did deal a lot of damage like that one leper gnome attacked then leper gnome died it's like six damage from just those two green creatures. yeah the walking infiltrator attacked the leper uh, the leper nymph just died oh, instantly right, right. but yeah still they got their death rattle off but in the end he was left on 25 HP and that's pretty healthy I would say yeah surviving the first uh, three turns or the first four <laughs> turns against a face hunter with 25 HP so uh, he was really looking I think it was his his draws he just he had the nice start but what people always forget the nice start is not enough you have to follow it up with something and he did not draw sludge belcher for example uh, I don't know if he's playing the mid range version. It does not look like it because of playing Isara. Uh, some warriors uh, did put those uh, piloted shredders in. But uh, here we go now with the, the third game. Is it the third game already? It's 2 0 for Alish. Yeah, it's the third game. And uh, Forsen's tournament life is on the line. He, and uh, Alish is left with his Druid deck. So if Forsen is going to queue the warrior versus Druid, that will be very dangerous. He picks up his mage. Uh, if this is a mech mage, and I believe Forsen played a lot of mech mage before as well. Uh, but it does not really look like a mech mage. It, it just looks like the mid range mage with the Kazan Mystic or and yeah the f uh, the, the flame tempo mage here. looks like a tempo mage, right? Yeah, uh, I guess you can call it tempo or mid range. Well, it is a difference in the end, but uh, is there basically it's not a mech mage. It's like a, and yeah. it's not a freeze mage. It's something in the middle where you just. It is just a deck with you have more secrets usually. You play the mana worm and removal. Mana worm and for three mana, what's the name of the one where you can Kirin play? Kirintor apprentice. Kirintor mage. Kirintor it's mage, a mage. Yeah. It's not even an apprentice. And but you play the sorcerer's apprentice as well, and the deck was like in two seasons ago. It was very popular in the top hundred uh, yeah. legend players. And then it's spread it around and it's uh, recently seen in a lot of tournaments. Oh yeah, the deck is definitely good. And uh, even recently, RDU played it in the final uh, of an Invitational versus show. So we've, we've seen many players play it and choose over the mech mage, which is easy to counter. Uh, okay, here. we are lagging behind our will. So mage versus druid. Mech mage has a very good matchup versus druid. This kind of mage, I believe, uh, has a good matchup as well. Whenever I see more entity, versus Druid, I think the matchup is good. Uh, yeah, I, I have played it a lot. It, it gets pretty close. Well, I guess the Mech Mage matchup is a bit better here for uh, if you're the Mage against the Druid, but it's still decent. Uh, sometimes also those big Flame Strikes uh, can be important. Sometimes getting a Flame Strike on uh, the Druid and f especially the Fireballs, the clearing those Druids of the Claw as we see it already here in the hand. It's very important to immediately have your Fireball ready for that. Fireball is one of the best ways to clear under the claw. Like one of the cheapest best ways because Black Knight is one of the best. Yeah. And I'm looking at that Kesson Mystic and I think, hey, Kesson Mystic is going to be a dead card. But in a very weird scenario, if Alesh is playing Kesson Mystic and steals Meridity, then Kesson Mystic can steal it back. Yeah, I guess that's one of the most reasons why you still play it. Even though uh, the Kesson Mystic lost some of uh, its, its popularity. You still play it because you can steal your secrets back in the case they are stolen. But first of all, here with the second... Oh, no, it's the That's counter spell, counter -spell. Unfortunately. unfortunately. And we go <laughs> with another bug, or, but still, we will stay in the game. That was a very powerful turn by Forsen, just uh, establishing that pile of the shredder and that counter spell. Right now, uh, Alesh might think that this is mirror entity, so he might... He might just... He was super happy that it is not a mirror entity. Yeah, but anyways, he, he went for Harrison Jones to, to try it out. So... Now we see Forzen playing the Azor Drake here. What does he get? Did he already... We didn't see card draw, did we? I think the game is like a bit... Is like we can like jump in, jump out quickly. Oh so. my god. Well, it, it sometimes happens that we have this. Like, it doesn't affect the players, by the way, guys. This is only the the viewing thing uh, because we are spectating right now the games. So the players—it's uh, just Blizzard mocking us. 
<laughs> yeah, just uh, as, uh, additional entertainment value. <laughs> yeah, because every time you can see the players play, you will see Nimsh talking. Well, not usually, but... All right, so here, Alej knows this is a counter spell because he played a minion, this is no mirror energy. And uh, just casting Wrath would not cut it, so he has to do something with his Pilot Shredder. Oh, there is a Flame Cannon. It's a second Flame Cannon already. That's a bit different from the standard build I know. Uh, and it's also, I know that uh, Team Millennium from France, uh, they uh, use two counter spells. It's also, so you have some variations in those uh, deck buildings. But Dr. Boom and Ragnaros are in them all. And here we see Dr. Boom entering the board for Forzen. Forzen makes a very good decision. He can play Dr. Boom and he <laughs> does it. Wow, such skill here on the line. That, that shows excellence. And but then there's again Dr. Boom versus Dr. Boom. No misplay by Alice here as well. Dr. Boom was green and listen to Nim when Dr. Boom is green, just play it. Doesn't matter what's on the board, just always play Dr. Boom when I, you can. Well, this card is kind of overpowered, I guess, but I still love it because, you know, like looking at this board, this board is so so powerful for both Blizzard players. should nerf it, make it a 6-7. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nerf it to 6-7. But for Druid, it's better, because Forsen has to clear this. With double Savage Roar, yeah, there, is, there, is a counter there is a counter spell, but if those bombs are not cleared... But it's so much pressure now by Forsen here as well. Wait, if, uh, if there will be an Innervate... First of all, he triggers the counter spell with his Wild Grove. He'll probably go for... Would well, you silence the Sludge Boucher? Yeah, I, I mean, feel like, like you have to. He can't really win with Double Savager, right? So he has to silence it and, and get, then get good trades. He can wrap the Boom. Good the thing is that he can take out that Dr. Boom with his Wrath. And he's also pretty safe on 19. So now he needs to get good bombs. So the bomb magic starts. Fourth phase is important. Fourth to Taking goal. out a Mad Scientist, not too bad. It's right. another Mirror Entity. Well, that's annoying for our, uh, for Alish for sure. All right, so Forsen. Well, that bomb doesn't matter that much. I guess you can attack into the bomb. You know what? Forsen could set up a 50-50 lethal next turn. Yeah. With uh, the, no, with not a 50-50, but Ragnaros, you mean? but a 33% chance of of lethal if something survives. If he just trades into the bomb and then plays Ragnaros, I would just see what the bomb does. Just do that first to to know what you're about to do. I still like playing Ragnaros here because you you kill the bombs and then you have a good way to. No, no matter what happens, if you take out Doctor Boom, that's actually pretty nice. Uh, if you take out the uh, Keeper of the Grove, that's not too bad. Ragnaros did some kind of a job. But first of all, wow! Well, I will actually attack with uh, yeah. with, with the pallet shredder first. Now attack it with the pallet shredder. Maybe also trade the keeper of the grove away to be safe against no, the now, combo. No, no, no! I think uh, now I will just take Ragnaros 50-50. No, really? No, not, not the, not no, you do, no, you can't do it. You have to play around the combo. Oh, you're right. Hmm. You have to play. You have to trade that away. Oh yeah. Uh, I, I guess I'm getting tired today. <laughs> We had like we tested the delayed yesterday. But that's a mistake, I would say. Dreading it like that. Okay, he prepares now for the combo like that, and we'll go for the flame cannon. Okay, that's a possibility here. I just really wanted to see a Ragnaros being played. For yeah, I, I know that. I know that situation. Ragnaros is always cool. And like this, uh, Alish doesn't really want to give his opponent the shade of next Ramos, but it's his only choice, and there he goes, and that means lethal for Forzen uh, next up. Uh, lethal on board even, right? Like, yeah. he doesn't need anything. Whoa, so Forzen is not an O Forzen. Forzen is actually going to take this game with Mage, but even so, even so he will have a very difficult matchup, Warrior vs. Druid. But you know what? Forzen said it before. Like, he has a... Warrior that wins versus Druids. Okay. And I want to see Forsen if he can win versus Druid with his Warrior. But yeah, right it's, now. It's going to be tough. If, if your opponent, if it happens in a best of five conquest and your opponent is left with a Druid, you know that he has, because Druid has good chances against nearly everything. Yes. And you know, okay, it's going to be tough and I have to be lucky because the Druid winning three games, winning one out of three games, uh, the chances for the Druid are pretty high. Yeah. But on the other hand, the Druid does not only have a good chance to win against everything, it also has a good chance to lose against everything. 
Yeah, so Druid is that kind of deck. Like, uh, it can win versus everything, it can lose everything. But I think the players are ready, so we can actually jump in quickly and see if Forsen is going to kill the Druid and then face a bad matchup in the end, or is he going to try to steal the game of Warrior? First of all, it's a mirror match, so 50 50 chances here. I like <laughs> it, uh, because I still believe that Warrior is a bad matchup. So if Forsen wins the 50 50 mirror match right now, yeah. he will come to, the, to game number five as a winner. Like, he will face Alesh as the guy who is on the winning streak. That's why you want to position, like mentally, you want to position yourself in a better and spot. Look at that. Forzen has the White Grove and the coin in his hand. On the other hand, we see Alish. He has the scenarios, no other minions. So uh, the starting hand here for Forzen is way better. He will be the first one to put something on the board with the Pilot the Shredder, probably. And Alish, on the other hand, will maybe draw into 5-drop, maybe into Sludge Belcher or Druid of the Claw. And now the scenarios are stuck in his hand. Without a White Grove, that's a very bad start here for Alish. I, I certainly agree. Like Forsen's hand is beautiful with Pilot Shredder and Doctor Boom, with the with Wild Grove and coins, just great. And Alish, like you don't want to have spells, you want to have minions, you want to have Wild Grove, Innervate. You want to start putting pressure. You don't want to be defensive. Like even Scenarios, it's a really late game card without the the ramp elements. Maybe if Alish draws into Innervate, Torison, maybe then he will be able to yeah. fight back. But Druid, is, Druid versus Druid is more or less very swingy. Like, players, they do uh, trade a lot. Uh, we're going to do a quick switch, guys. But uh, yeah, this is a definitely a very important matchup. Small differences in cards will mean victory or death. You know, in the first games, it never bucked so much. But right now, it's just every 10 seconds, we do have the spectator buck. Oh, that's my fault, probably. I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, you're giving bad luck to the, to the computer. All right, so you can see like the game advanced pretty fast. Yeah, we are in turn six already. We missed a lot, but anyway, we see that uh, Alish is now establishing a board for himself with the Paladin Shredder. On the other hand, Forzen could not do too much, but with that Emperor Thorison on the full hand. That's wow. so powerful. Just getting those Ancients of War, uh, cheaper, Savage Roar. Uh, what's the card for six? Uh, Sylvanas. That's Sylvanas. Oh, yeah. This is a very big move. Also, Alish has to do something with that Torison. Like, he has to clear it right now. There are too many cards in Forsen's hand. He could go for a swipe on that Mistress of Pain and trade the uh, Palo the Treader into that. You could also tank some damage. Uh, you could trade that Mistress of Pain away first and then go for a swipe and use your hero ability to take that Thorison out. But I definitely agree to you, uh, you have to take that Thorison out. Unless you think you can actually win the game with, like, racing. Wow. Just take, the, take your chance and race. You could go, if you wanted to, you... No, I think because of the Mistress and Tori Sun, you're going to lose the race. Like, you can start racing now, but uh, then in three turns you're going to lose And the anyway. thing is, Alish is facing so many options in Forzen's hand, and he does not know what Forzen does have in his hand. And if we, if you could expect a double combo here, you definitely have to do something against that Thorison. Such a difficult turn for the Druid. Like, Alish is taking his time. Like, we are, we are not bugging now. He, he takes the chance with Scenarius. That looks like going for the race to me. Yeah, that's a, that definitely does the race. So he gives Forsen a chance to come back. Forsen gets innervated. That might wow. be important. Wow, such game. It's actually incredible. Yeah, so it's a great game here. So what do you do as Forsen? You potentially you have 10 points of mana. You do have Ancient of Lore for 6. For like, Doc, you'd have Dr. Boom. What does it mean that your opponent just innervated scenarios? You want to deal with it, right? You, you, you want to kill this stuff. You're not facing the combo next turn because uh, Alish will be on 8 mana next turn. So, uh, you but it does innervate, a second one. Well, but I, I guess at this point, can you really play around that? First of all, well, he goes for the Keeper of the Grove. He's playing that very quickly, not really taking his time. Or maybe he's just having a good overview over the situation. And he will go uh, for that Sylvanas, but he will be left dead uh, if there would be an Innervate into the combo. So he is not playing around that, and I totally understand why. And wow! Oh, there's what the fuck? There is a Doomsayer. That's like Alish dropped something, actually. Yeah, um, Alish, Alish was just so crazy now. He, he was like, oh no, it came uh, Doomsayer coming out of my shredder. So Orson. this guy is really 
<laughs> He's angry, man. Have you seen that? Yeah, he was. <laughs> he was really angry. And uh, but now he is rewarded. Well, he was, he's actually rewarded for. Oh, I, I can't believe what we are watching right now. Like Doom Slayer for Forsen, wow. Doom for Alash, top deck. Doctor Boom now next turn the combo. So uh, Forsen has to do something against that. You can't. You can't just heal up. You don't heal up that turn. Well, if you go for Dr. Boom, like you, you might need to take a guess. Following, following your advice, he has to play Dr. Boom now. He had to play Dr. Boom about two turns ago already, but he was that the misplay? Uh, well, <laughs> possibly, but it's <laughs> tough, man. Like Right now, if you can't win, you have to make a, a guess that there is no combo for are they? Opponent. Are they playing it? Yeah, we are lagging. Uh, I will just describe what I see here, and yeah. Forzen went for the Dr. Boom, ladies and gentlemen, and that left Alish with the combo, and uh, that was how he closed the game out. And that's a 3-1 victory here. Unfortunately, we were not able to see that, but I hope you can imagine how how those Trians came in. You need to help me, so so Trians... Yeah, I'm just, like I'm just stunned. I'm like looking at Forzen, uh, <laughs> because, you know, guys, Forzen is uh, eliminated from the tournament. He is eliminated from the Story Cup on day one. Uh, but he is going to stay with us, he's going to have a lot of fun, and he's going to play... He's gonna lose money to us. me in poker. Yes, he's definitely going, you know, like, we have all the friends in here. We have a lot of cool guys, we have, like, we are watching games together, we are having fun, we are rooting for our friends. So, what happened here, uh, there was a good decision to take a Druid versus Druid, but, um, well, even though it seemed like... like I, I regret that we didn't see that the beginning of the game. But Me too. it seemed like Forsen had an advantage, like he had a better hand, but then Druid is all about like tempo and Alish was able to position himself to win with the combo and uh, shut Forsen down. So tough luck for Forsen. Alish um, advances to the winner's bracket. He will face number guy. He will face number guy, the yes, that's the decider match in that group. And either number guy or Alish are gonna advance together with Sixo to the next stage of the tournament. And after a quick break, we will deliver you that decider match between Alish and uh, number, number guy. guy. Yes. And yeah, get yourself another thing to eat or grab yourself a beer and we will be right back.